Shall we rise up to pray? Our God and our Father, we thank you for bringing us to the Bible study tonight. Thank you because you give us a heart to, what come, to want to come and learn from the Word of God. We pray, O Lord, that today your Word will wake us up in Jesus' name. We pray, O Lord, as we study these things in your Word, we'll not study in vain, but what we study will prepare us for the coming of the Lord in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that as we prepare us and we're ready, you help us to prepare other people, preach to them, reach out to them, so that you can be ready as we are ready in Jesus' name. Be with us in the study tonight. Keep us awake, that you will not be taken away by sleep or tiredness. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank you. You can be seated. Tonight, we come to a very important study. We're still going on with our series in the book of Revelation. Already, we have studied quite a lot. You remember that we started with the glorified Christ in Revelation chapter 1. And then in chapters 2 and 3, we studied about the church. In chapters 4 and 5, we studied about the throne of God. And all those 24 elders representing the church and the living creatures representing the angels are they united together and they worship the Lord and they said honor, blessing, glory, adoration be unto the Lord because he has cleansed us with the blood of the Lamb and then he has made us worthy come a preparing for the a Lord to reign on the earth. And then in chapter 6 actually the great tribulation began. And with chapter 6 all through to chapter 19, we have spent such a long time learning about the great tribulation. And now we come to chapter 20. At the end of that chapter 20, you understand that now, at the beginning of chapter 20 rather, the great tribulation is over. And then you have the establishment of the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the reign of Jesus Christ for a thousand years. You learned last week as we studied together that immediately after the release of Satan out of the bottomless pit, he goes all the way to all the four corners of the earth and then deceived the people once again. And they felt they were going to wage a war, a battle against the Almighty God and against the anointed the Christ. And then in that battle of Armageddon, all those enemies of the Lord were destroyed. And then Satan was captured and taken. And then he was thrown to the lake of fire. That's your find in Revelation chapter 20 verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Where the beast and the false prophet are. And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. What we come to today is referred to as a great white throne judgment. And the reason why it's referred to like that is what you have in verse 11. Revelation chapter 20 verse 11. And I saw a great white throne. And him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. That means now the final judgment had eventually come. And it's at this final judgment that all the nations and all the people, all individuals, small and great, will appear before the Lord. And they will be judged according to the things that are written concerning them. Well, before we look into that uh, passage itself, I want to tell you that this subject of the final judgment, the great white throne judgment, had actually been revealed from the Old Testament time. And the Old Testament people knew that all of us who are living here on earth were just at the time of probation. That is, you are here to live a life that will make you have either a resting place, a happy place, a joyful place, a, a blissful place in eternity. Or, if you live on the other side of the line, the other side of the cross, then you live in eternity without God, without peace, without joy, and without any rest at all. I'm saying that uh, these have been revealed from the Old Testament time. In fact, as you look at Daniel chapter 7, Daniel chapter 7, looking at it from verse 9 and verse 10. Here you find what the word of the Lord is saying. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white, 
as snow, and, his, and the air of his head like pure wool, but and his throne was like fairy flame, and his wheels as burning fire. As you look at that verse, you find throne. You find the white throne. And then you find the burning fire. And it says in verse 10, A fairy stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, thousands ministered unto him. And ten thousand and ten, ten thousand stood before him. And the judgment was set and the books were opened. As you come to the book of Revelation then, and you're reading about the great white throne judgment. This is not the first time the readers of the Bible, students of the Bible, will come across that. It's been revealed from the Old Testament time. In fact, if you go far back to the Psalms, in Psalm 9, as you look at Psalm 9, and you're reading it from verse 4, you will see again that the judgment of the world had been revealed from the earliest of times. In Psalm 9, I'm reading to you from verse 4. For thou hast maintained my right and my cause. Thou sartest in the throne judging right. It's like it's done already. Because it's sure to happen. That the almighty God will sit upon the throne. And he'll be judging. And when he judges he'll do right. In verse 5 thou hast rebuked the heathen. Thou hast destroyed the wicked. Thou hast put out their name forever and ever. O thou enemy destructions are come to a perpetual end. And thou hast destroyed thou, thou hast destroyed cities. Their memorial, their memorial is perish of them. But the Lord shall endure forever. He shall he has prepared his throne for judgment. As you come to the study of today, then you understand that this uh, judgment we are talking about is everywhere revealed in the word of God. In Psalm 50 verse 6, Psalm 50 verse 6, and the heaven shall declare his righteousness. For God is judge himself. That is, the Lord will not leave the judgment to the angels. Neither will he leave the uh, judgment to the whims and the wishes of men. But the Lord himself, almighty God himself, the one that set the law, that men had broken. He himself is the one that will rise up and judge on that final day. Psalm 96, I'm reading verse 13. Psalm 96, verse 13. Before the Lord. For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. That he is, he has his moral law. And he has the truth of scripture. By which he is going to judge. And he will judge the whole world. He cometh to judge the earth. As we look at Ecclesiastes chapter 3, you are reading verse 17. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 17. I said in my heart. God shall judge the righteous and the wicked. It's evaluating everything that everybody does. You're righteous, he evaluates. And you are not righteous, you are wicked, you are not saved, he evaluates. He takes note of everything that is done. For there is a time, for there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. As you come to the New Testament, at the same time you are learning in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17. Acts chapter 17, reading verse 31. Acts 17, verse 31. Because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained, whereof he has given assurance unto all men, in that he has raised him from the dead. Do you see that everything coming from the Old Testament to the New Testament is pointing to the fact that judgment day is coming and all will be there. And when God says he's thrown to judge, he will judge in righteousness and he will judge according to the records that have been written in the books. All the deeds of men, all the actions of men, all the behavior characteristics of men, everything they go on record. And God is going to judge on that final day. That final judgment, Peter makes allusion to it in Second Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Second Peter chapter 3. And I'm looking at verse 7. Here, uh, the apostle Peter reveals to us, has revealed to the people at that time, that uh, we need to mind uh, the way we live. And whether we're saved or not, whether we know the Lord or not, because the judgment day is coming. It's even now right at the door. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, 
By the same word, I kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. That the heavens will see now, the sky and the firmament, and the galaxies, and the Milky Way. And everything you see when you look up in the sky, everything will be folded up. And the earth that is now rotating and moving around its orbit around the sun is going to be destroyed by fire. And it says, at that time, there will be the day of judgment and the perdition of ungodly men. That's what we come to look at today. The great white throne judgment. Please come back to Revelation chapter 20. I'm reading to you from verse 11. Revelation chapter 20, reading from verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever, and whosoever, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Those are the verses we're looking at today. It mentions judgment. And it mentions him that sits upon that throne judging. This gives account of the final judgment. And what a solemn, sober, and serious passage this is. That the first time the apostle John mentioned the throne, he mentioned a different kind of throne. And that you find in chapter 4. When you have time, when you go back home, you can refer to it again. And the throne that you find in chapter 4 of Revelation is a glorious throne. It's a majestic stone. It's a splendid stone. A, a throne. It's a throne that is filled with the mercy of God. In fact, it says in that passage in chapter 4, Behold, the throne was set in heaven, and one sat on that throne. And there was a rainbow around, round about the throne. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And they give glory and honor and thanks unto him that sat on the throne. And they worship him. Have you noticed the difference, the contrast between the throne in chapter 4 and the throne in chapter 20? In chapter 4, there was a rainbow around the throne. What's the rainbow signifying to us? What's the rainbow symbolizing to us? That's the mercy of God. That's the grace of God. That's the faithfulness of God. Because God said that when I see that rainbow, I will remember my covenant. And I'm a covenant-keeping God. And when you read about the throne then in Revelation chapter 4, you read about the mercy of God, the grace of God, the love of God, the faithfulness of God, because he is a merciful covenant keeping God. But when you come to chapter 20, there's no rainbow here now. Because there's no mercy here. Because there's no love. Because there's no grace. The day of grace is over. And the great the day of preaching the gospel to the people is over. And then when you come to this Revelation chapter 20, there are no lightnings and there are no thunderings and there are no voices. Why? Because in chapter 4, those thunderings and uh, those uh, lightnings, they are for the warning of the people that the day is coming when you will not be able to partake of the love of God that now is beckoning upon you. And the people of God are celebrating because they are serving a faithful God, a merciful God, a covenant-keeping God. That's why you find the thunderings over there and the lightnings over there. The warning that you can still escape and escape for your life and run into the kingdom of God by repentance and faith in the Lord. But as you come into chapter 20, there were no thunderings here. There are no evangelists here. There are no trumpeters here that are proclaiming that you can still come to the Lord because it's all over. It's all over. Grace over. Love over. Mercy over. Evangelism over. The possibility of getting saved over. That's why you don't find the thunders of warning here. All that remains here now will be justice, judgment, retribution. That will be the condemnation of the unbelievers. And then as you come to this uh, awesome passage, you're going to find uh, something that here there is no worship. 
Here there is no singing. But when you come to chapter 4 of Revelation and you're reading about the throne of God, you find the 24 elders laying down their crown and they fall before the Almighty God and they worship Him and they adore Him and they glorify Him. Over here there is no worship because the people are terrified and the people are fearful because the fury of the Lord has come upon them now and will fear. They all assemble before the Almighty God. That means then, if you're going to prepare for eternity, this is the time to prepare. And if you want the grace of God, the mercy of God, and the love of God, today is the time of grace. But when, if you wait too long, and then you come to this time of the great white throne judgment, all that will be over. All that will be waiting for them will be doom and damnation and condemnation. The final reckoning day of judgment is what we are reading about in Revelation chapter 20. And what a day that will be. I pray you will escape in Jesus' name. We we'll divide the message to three parts. Number one, the faithful, fierce judge. The faithful, fierce judge. Then number two, the final, fear judgment. The final, fear judgment. Number three, the fathomless frightful justice fathomless frightful justice let's come back to number one we're looking at the almighty god himself now the faithful judge the fierce judge revelation chapter 20 reading from verse 11 revelation chapter 20 verse 11 and i saw a great white throne and him that sat on it for whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. Uh, can I tell you something about John? John was prepared to see all this, and he was prepared to see it very clearly in pictorial form. Have you, have you here heard the word before when somebody has said that one single picture is more than is worth more than a thousand words? How did they say that? Because when you see a picture. It never gets away from your mind. And see all that John had been seeing in his revelation. And I saw, and I beheld, and I looked. And then beholding, see what I saw. He saw the great tribulation. He saw the antichrist. He saw the beast. He saw the false prophet. And he saw the devastation that will come upon Babylon. And now he sees the great white throne judgment. It was a vision. And when you see a vision like that, it will be difficult for you to backslide. When you see a vision like that, it will be difficult for you to get discouraged and give up. Because you've seen the picture and you know that it is real. And as, as we read all this, uh, you need to even imagine. So that you too you can see a picture. When you hear the words, paint it in your mind. And I saw a great white throne. Imagine it yourself. And imagine the almighty God sitting there. And imagine the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, that becomes the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Imagine him sitting there. And imagine the whole world standing before him. And the people trembling. And then the earth is rolled up. And then it flees away. And the heavens also, they are folded up. And they go away. And I want you to imagine the great men. The stout men, the mighty men, the warriors, and the people of the world trembling like, uh, like um, rats before the lion. And then you picture yourself standing there if you were to be there. And if you are not saved now, and you picture yourself there, when you see that picture, you want to run into the grace of God, into the kingdom of God at this time of opportunity. But John said, I saw it, and it made a mark in my heart. And I never will forget. And that's why that man endured to the very end. I saw it was a great white throne. It was a throne of judgment. And it was a final judgment. All the people from all nations and all generations who refused to come before the throne of grace to receive the mercy of God and the salvation of the Lord, they will come before the throne of judgment. And then John said, it wasn't an ordinary, ordinary throne. It was great. It was high. It was lifted up. It was exalted. And these are the place where the final judgment will be given and meted out to men and women, boys and girls. Everybody that ever lived and rejected the grace of God. This will be the place where the final judgment will come upon them. It was a throne, he said. A throne of judgment. 
and it was also great, high and exalted. And then he said, not only that, it was white, bright, shining, dazzling, a dazzling throne where spotless, flawless, faultless, irreversible judgment and justice will come forth upon the people. And then he tells us in, verse, in that verse 11, I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, him that sat on it, that's the Lord himself. But who is that in particular? I dare tell you, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. How do we say it's the Lord Jesus Christ? Turn with me in your Bible and see the one that is going to meet out, give out, or uh, uh, deal out the final judgment on that day. In John chapter 5, verse 22. John chapter 5. Verse 22, for the father judges no man, but has committed all judgment unto the son. What a revelation. That is the son of, the son of God, the son of man. The Lord Jesus Christ himself on that day that will sit on that great white throne. Because the father has committed all judgment into the hands of the son of God. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 10 verse 42. Acts chapter 10 verse 42 and he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. He has been ordained, he has been appointed to do that. He will be the judge of the living and the dead. We're told in Romans chapter 2 verse 16 that Jesus Christ is the one that will sit on that throne and will judge on that final day. Romans chapter 2 verse 16. In the day that God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. According to my gospel. That he is the almighty God will judge. Yes, but he will be judging through the, uh, through the uh, instrumentality of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Uh, look at Matthew chapter 25. In Matthew chapter 25, looking at verse 31, you find as the Lord Jesus Christ told his own disciples, he will be the judge on that day. Matthew chapter 25, verse 31, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all his holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations. He is the one that will judge. And so as we come back to Revelation chapter 20, and you're looking at verse, at that verse 11, you understand? It will be a frightful sight, a frightening sight, as the earth and the heaven, that is the earthly elements and the heavenly firmament will all flee away. What fright as sinners will stand alone, without any covering, without any advocate, without any savior, and without any mercy. They will stand naked, before the great judge on that day. In this Revelation chapter 20 verse, verse 11. Look at it again. And I saw a great white throne. And him that sat on it. For most face the earth and the heaven fled away. When it says the earth it means the globe. That means the earth on which we are now. It will vanish away. And then when it says the heaven. It's talking about the heavenly firmament, that is the sky, that is the stars, and the sun, and all the universe, everything will vanish away. And then it says, and there was found no place for them. And let's go to all the scriptures and confirm that this day of judgment actually is coming, and it's coming very fast. We're coming back to Psalm 9. In Psalm 9, reading from verse 7 and verse 8. Psalm 9, reading from verse 7. And you will see here the revelation of the word of the Lord. But the Lord shall endure forever. He, shall pre he has prepared his throne for judgment. Verse 8, he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall meet such judgment to the people in uprightness. And then in verse 16, it tells us further, in verse 16, the Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Then in verse 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell. And all nations that forget God. It tells us that on that final day, with that final judgment coming upon them, 
that the wicked will be thrown into hell. The people that do not know the Lord, the people that have not given themselves to the Lord, the people that have rejected mercy, they have rejected the grace of God, they have rejected the narrow way that leads to life eternal, and they have taken the broad way of liberty, of sensuality, of fleshly, uh, fleshly practices, and the way of crime they have followed. Then on that final day, there will be judgment upon them. Psalm 97, I'm reading from verse 2. In Psalm 97, reading from verse 2. Here again, we have a confirmation of the very fact that judgment is coming and is going to come upon the people that are believers, the people that remain adamant in their sin and they remain strong in their evil and they remain uh, unrepentant impenitent it says in psalm 97 verse 2 clouds and darkness are round about him righteousness and judgment at the habitation of his throne a fire goeth before him and burneth up his enemies round about his lightnings enlightened the world they are so and tremble the hills melted melted like wax at the presence of the lord at the presence of the lord of the whole earth the heavens declare his righteousness and all the people see his glory confounded be all day that serve graven images that boast themselves of idols and worship him all worship him or ye gods it tells us that the people who practice idolatry there are some people that practice idolatry in what they call churches. They have images there they bow down to them. And here it says, all those people are going to be confounded that are serving graven images. The people that are boasting themselves of idols. And the people who worship the idols of stone, idols of wood, idols of money, idols of material things. The judgment of God is going to be fierce upon them. On that final day, we read Daniel before. Let's look at it again. Uh, when you have something repeated, it sticks in your mind. In Daniel chapter 7, I'm reading verses 9 and 10. Daniel chapter 7, verses 9 and 10. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow. And the air of his head like pure wool. His throne was like the fairy flame. And his wheels as burning fire. A fairy, stream, a fairy stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him. Ten thousand and ten thousand stood before him. And the judgment was said. How were the people judged? Verse 10. The books were opened. The deeds of men and women. The deeds of boys and girls, the deeds of young and old that have been written in those books, all those things were brought out and they were judged out of them. All the things that people cover up today. And maybe the nation does not catch them. And maybe the church does not catch them. And they manage to cover up so much and they go scot free. And they say there's no punishment from the world and there's no discipline from the church. And they think they're very clever. Everything goes into the book of God. And on that final day, the books are going to be opened. And all those people are going to be judged according to what has been written in the books. And then you will discover there's nothing covered, there's nothing hidden, there's nothing secret. God sees it all. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 13. Acts of the Apostles chapter 17 verse 30. And the times of this ignorant God winked at. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. He's he telling us the only way of escape. That he's telling all men everywhere to repent. What if they fail to repent? Well, in verse 31, because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained, whereof he has given assurance unto all men in that he has raised him from the dead. The Lord Jesus Christ will judge. All the secrets of men are going to be judged. Are there some things we are keeping secret? The church must not hear this one. And then you are bribing the people that know about it. Maybe you give them money. Or you give them whatever you want to give them. Or you give them some position. So that they'll keep quiet. Don't ever repeat that thing. Don't let my church know. If my church knows that thing, I'm going to get you into trouble. Therefore, don't let anybody know. All those secret things are going to be brought out in that day. And there are some things for hiding away from your wife. My wife must not hear this. 
Uh, and, and I'm going to tell her because, you know, she, she has a high blood pressure. And if I tell her this thing, uh, I know that it's going to shoot up the high blood pressure. I don't want her to die prematurely. Therefore, I'm going to keep it away from her. And then you say, my honey, my dear, my love and everything, I'm very faithful to you. You know, I'm so faithful to you that no matter where I am, in the light, in the darkness, I'm always faithful. I'll wait until that day. Because all the secrets of men are going to be brought out. And all the money that uh, you steal in the place of work, or maybe you steal it in the church, and then you put your hand like this, and you're telling the members of the church, look at my face, can I steal? Look at me very well. Do I look like a person that can steal any money from the church? You know how sincere I am, and you know how faithful I am, and all the people are thinking that you're an angel, and that you're living right. And uh, truly, you are not a thief, but you know you are a thief. And the places in the, your place of work, uh, when you, you know, maybe if, uh, when you saw just uh, 2,000 naira somewhere, you picked it up, and then you gave it to the manager. And then when you saw 5,000, you picked it up and gave it to somebody, uh, you, you said, I saw this on the ground. And meanwhile, that you are returning 2,000, returning 5,000, uh, you are embezzling hundreds of thousands and even millions in that place of work. And when they are, when they are investigating, who's told this who's told this then you come out you say look at me manager do you remember the other time i saw two thousand on the ground i returned it to you the other time i saw ten thousand didn't you keep record i returned everything do you think i can be implicated in this a case of stealing what am i going to do with money and they say we know you you go you are you are, you are a christian you are a real righteous person if everybody in this place were like you this place will be clean and then you go and then you're smiling and you know you are the thief you think it's hidden but it's going to come out on that day. All the secrets of men that people are hiding, it will come out at that time. There will be no way of escape. And there will be no way that you are going to escape. And the judgment of God is going to be held fire straight. Express road to help fire to the lake of fire. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment. God shall bring every work into judgment. With every secret thing. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. The judgment is going to come. And when that judgment comes, it's going to come with fiery indignation. From the throne of God to the people that stand before his throne. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. I'm reading from verses 8 and 9. In 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 8. Here is what it says in flaming fire. Taking vengeance on them that know not God. And that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who are the people that will be before the white throne of God? The people that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. What's another description for them? The people that know not God. They do not know God, the God of salvation. They do not know God, the, the righteous God. And they do not have the righteousness of God. And it says on that day, flaming fire of judgment will come upon them. In verse 9, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. What a great judgment will come upon them in that day. We're looking at Second Peter chapter 3. In Second Peter chapter 3, it tells us from verse 7, and it, but the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire, against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. And then it tells us in verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with far bent heat. The, the, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. What then shall we do? 
It tells us in verse 13, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for the new heavens and the new, and the new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent, that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot, and blameless. And that tells us then that judgment is coming. And that judgment is going to be terrible. Who are the people if we can describe item by item, detail by detail, that are going to experience that judgment of God? Romans chapter 1, verse 28. Romans chapter 1, verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, those are the people that are going to face that judgment on that day, they do not like to retain God in their knowledge. You know the meaning of that? When they go to the place of work, and then they want to do their dubious act, and somebody says, ah, but you remember the word of God? We must not defraud, we must not see ah, this place of work. I don't carry Bible to the place of work. Work is work, church is church. They do not retain God in their knowledge in the place of work. And when it is between the husband and wife, my wife, this is what we are going to do. Ah, no. Because uh, you, uh, according to, uh, look at the Bible. Ah, no, this is family. When we're in church, we're in church. Family is family. I don't, don't carry Bible here. I don't condemn me with your Bible reading. They do not like to retain God in their knowledge in family affairs. Or when it comes to dealing with their in-laws. And then the in-laws maybe have, have offended them. And they want to retaliate or whatever. And somebody says, but you know, the Bible says we should forgive 70 times, 7 times. Forgive? Where did you find that? We are dealing with sin, Lord. You are talking about forgiveness. And when we go to church, we know that's church. These people, they don't know God. I'm not going to apply Bible knowledge here. They do not have God in their knowledge. Or even when they, when they, they're dealing with uh, people that have offended them. And uh, maybe they're even in the church. And somebody did something that they didn't appreciate. And they say, that's my right. And they deny me of my right. And they do not appreciate who I am and what I have and the, uh, the, 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 the gift I have and the talent I have. I'm going to deal with them. And then somebody says, but you're a Christian. And yes, I'm a Christian. You know, tooth for tooth and eye for eye. Ah, but Jesus said, it shall not be so anymore. Don't quote the Bible for me. Because, you know, if you don't teach these people hard lesson, they'll keep on ill-treating you. I'm going to do it. Ah, you don't retain God in your knowledge, in your relationship with people. And these are the people that are going to face the judgment of God on that day. And when that day comes, if you don't repent, if you don't change, you will not say you did not hear. The people that are going to face this irreversible, irrevocable judgment of God on that final day before the great white throne judgment, they are the people that do not retain God in their knowledge. Then in verse 28 it says, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. And that is, there are people, apart from their own doing evil, they have, they support the other people that are doing evil. And if any child is, uh, you know, trying to steal money from the parents, there are the people that will say, yes, everything your father has belongs to you. Steal it. Nothing will come out of it. And if anything happens, your father knows about it and they want to punish you, well, come and beg you, well, come and beg him, well, come and plead with, uh, uh, for you. They are the people that will encourage sinners to sin. They are the people that will encourage backsliders to backslide. They are the people that will encourage thieves to steal. They are the people that will send them out. You go and steal it and bring, come, bring part of it back to me. We'll protect you. And if you are like that, it says you know the judgment of God. That they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but they are pleasure. They give encouragement to those that do them. Let's come to, uh, back to Revelation chapter 20. In Revelation chapter 20, we're looking at verses 12 and 13. 
Revelation chapter 20 verse 12 and verse 13. It tells us, and I, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. This is a final fear judgment. It talks about resurrection to start with. Because it says in verse 13, And the dead and the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. That means then that all the dead who have not taken part in the first resurrection, who have not taken part at the time of the resurrection when the people were, were, were raised from the dead and they went up in the rapture, and the people that have not taken part in the resurrection that took place at the beginning of the, of the Christ millennial reign, they will not now rise from the dead. They will stand before the great judge, the almighty God. The dead, it says small and great. You know what that means? Young and old. Do you know there are some people that deceive themselves? And maybe their parents deceive them. Uh, maybe they steal. Maybe they commit fornication. Or maybe they do some other bad things. And neighbors come to report to the, uh, to the father or the mother. That see what your child has done. Oh, leave these children alone. They're still children. Are you not an adult? Children will be children. And adults will be adults. And this one they are calling children will be children. Adults will be adults. Already they are 13. Already they are 17. Already they are 19. And they are stealing all about in the community. Children will be children. And this one they are saying children will be children. It's already making a lady pregnant. Children will be children. Leave them alone. They will outgrow it. When they grow older, they will know that these things are not all right. You know God is a merciful God. He will not judge these children like that. And I saw the dead small and great stand before God. The children will be there. The young people will be there. All these uh, young people, you know, having exam, malpractice or whatever, and they're saying they're still children. And they're telling, the, you know, those teachers who are teaching them the word of God, don't be too strict on these children. Don't be too demanding. You need to understand that they're still children. You're talking about uh, how I see that uh, if we understand disciplining the adults in the adult church, but these uh, little children, teenagers, they do something wrong, you discipline them and uh, don't sing in the choir. Don't do this one. Don't do that one. Are they not children? They'll be judged, small and great. Everyone, salvation is available now for the children too. And salvation is available for the teenagers. And if they reject salvation and the rapture takes place and they are not able to go up with the people of God, when this judgment comes, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. That means then the young will be judged and the old will be judged. And all who have not taken part in the resurrection of the just will now be raised from the dead to stand before the judgment of God, before the great judge. That is sitting on this great white throne for the final judgment. And then it tells us in that chapter 20, chapter 20 verse, verse 12. It says, and the books were opened. And the books were opened. You know, once in a while, the Lord reminds us that all those things are on record. Do you remember oh, when you have uh, stolen something when you were in the primary school? And then you are now maybe about 40 or 42. All of a sudden, you're sleeping at night, and then you have a dream. And you see that person you stole the thing from. And it comes vividly in your imagination. And you did nothing at the age of 12. And you have not repented. You have not made a situation. Now you are 42 years of age, 30 years after. And you have a very clear dream. The Lord is just reminding you that that thing is on record. And I bring it back to your conscience. Or it may be when you, you know, when you uh, were still young, uh, you did something. And then after you did that thing, you ran away from that city. You ran to another place. And now it appears everybody has forgotten. You have even forgotten. All of a sudden, without even your thinking about it, uh, you are, maybe you are just happy. 
Now you've got money, you've got work, and everything, and you're just walking like this. All of a sudden on the road, you're not even dreaming. The thing comes back to you, like it hits you like a block, and you almost want to faint, and you, everything comes to you again in vivid picture. Now you're about 53, and nothing happened when you're a teenager. It comes to you again. The Lord is reminding you that everything is on record. And if it's coming to you like that 30 years after 40 years after everything you have done, that even the people you did it to, they are forgotten. They bore the pain at that time. They have forgotten it now. But you will not forget and your conscience will not forget. That's the reason why you need to settle it so that the blood of Jesus will wash it and the blood of Jesus will cover it before that day of judgment will come. Well, if you don't cleanse it by the blood of the Lamb, if you don't confess it and expose it so that the Lord will help you to cover it up, it's going to come on that final day. And look at it, it says, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. It's telling us that there are books of records containing the record of all human deeds. The records will constitute the basis of the final judgment on the last day. The all-seeing God is taking note of all the deeds of men, all the actions of men, all the motives of men, and the lives all individuals on earth are living. The final judgment will not be arbitrary, and it will not be determined by the man's rank, by the man's position, by the man's status, by the man's uh, profession. What we are saying here is this. You know, in our places of work now, if you are in the senior uh, management uh, section or echelon of the company and you do something that the management wants to rebuke you for, they want to call you, they allow the messengers to go home and they allow the uh, low class uh, workers to go home and then they have this uh, top level management uh, people and they, then they call you. And they do it in a secret place that the people, the younger people in the, in the organization will not know anything. Then they question you, how is this? How is this? And they check up the records and all that. And they settle everything there with you, even if they are going to discipline or punish you. And then when we come back uh, the following day, if you are still in the office, you walk and you put on your tie and you have your coat and you are walking all about as if nothing happened. Because only a few of us in the management actually knew what happened. Because of your rank, because of your position, because of your status. On that day, it will not be like that. The children will be there if their parents are there. Too, the, the parents and the children will be there together. And the children will see that their father has been messing up with women all around. They didn't know all this before. God is not going to call you to a secret place to judge you. And if the wife is there, the wife is, you know, be going to be job before the presence of the children there. God is not going to call you to a secret place and give you respect. What kind of respect? All those people, they are going to go to hellfire. And the books are going to be opened. And they're going to be opened. The records will come out. And you'll be judged according to the things that are written. No rank, no position, and there is no status, no profession. Everything will come out very clearly before everybody. Think about it. All this is written about in the papers, and you say that this senator has done this, and he says me, and then he gets a lawyer, and even though he has uh, swallowed millions of naira, he comes out of that case. And then the messengers, uh, you know, they still keep on respecting and carrying his bag and sweeping his office. On that day, the messenger and the, and the senator will be there together. And God is going to judge everyone openly. No rank and no position will count at that time. The books will be open and the men and the women and the boys and the girls, the young and the old, the rich and the poor, and the chiefs and the kings and the peasants and their subjects, they're going to appear before the great white throne judgment of God and they're going to be judged. In Daniel chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 2. Daniel chapter 12. We're reading from verse 2. It's telling us that there's going to be a resurrection. The resurrection of the just and then the resurrection of the unjust. The resurrection that will be to the favor of God, that is, will be to eternal joy and happiness, and the resurrection to damnation. Daniel chapter 12, reading from verse 2. It says, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. The people who are going to appear before the great white throne judgment, they will be the people that will rise up in resurrection to shame and everlasting contempt. We're told in John chapter 5, John chapter 5, we're reading verses 28 and 29. John chapter 5, reading from verse 28. In John 5, 
28, here the Lord Jesus Christ himself says, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice, and shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. And that's why it says uh, that uh, the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell gave up the dead which were in them, and they were all judged according to the word of God. In uh, Psalm 28, I'm reading from verse 4. Psalm 28, reading from verse 4. Here we are being told of what will happen on that final day. It says, Give them according to their deeds, according to the wickedness of their endeavors. Give them after the work of their hands. Render to them their desert because they regarded they regard not the works of the lord nor the oppression of his hands he shall destroy them and not build them up the people are going to be judged according to what is written in the books concerning them according to the records of their actions the records of their thoughts the records of their motives, that is the reason for doing what they did. And the records of everything they have done, the Lord is going to judge. In uh, chapter 24 of the Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 12. If thou seest, behold, we knew it not. Does not he that pondereth the heart consider it? We knew it not. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, you, you have witnessed somebody doing evil. And that evil person who has committed that sin is about to be corrected. But before the people correct him, they want to check up. Who knows whether this fellow has done this sin? Who knows whether this fellow committed this sin? And the people who know, they're coming to church, they're reading the Bible, they're hearing the Bible study. Then you call them, you say, do you know about this case? No, sir. I never saw that. Oh, if I saw that, I would have reported it myself, even without you telling me, why not you asking me? And they know very clearly that this man has committed this crime. They know very clearly this woman has committed the offense, but it's not, they will not hear from me. It will not be from me they will hear that I was the one that gave information, and then they rebuked brother so-and-so. And the corrected brother, so, so it will not be me that will report the matter. I will not open my mouth and then they will be putting my name in their mouth that I was the one that spoke, that revealed the secret and I let the cat out of the bag. And if you say, behold, we knew it not, does not he that pondereth the heart consider it? You know the people that are living in fornication? The people that are stealing? The people that are manifesting wickedness? And the people that are faithful to the teaching of the word of God. And the people that are compromising. But you're not going to do anything. In fact, there are times that you know some workers that are doing evil. You know some people that shouldn't be in the, uh, on the platform teaching or preaching. Either teaching the scripture or preaching anything at all. And yet you'll say, that's not my business. Ah, on the great judgment day, you know it was your business. I will not say anything. Let them do whatever they want to do. Because if you talk now, they will remove him. And that fellow will know that I was responsible. Everything is being recorded down. And the judgment day, when the judgment day comes, you will see how God is going to bring you to judgment on that day. Look at that verse 12 again. If thou seest, behold, we knew it not, does not he that pondereth the heart consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul, does he not know it? And shall not he render to every man according to his words? Yes, he will. And that's what will happen on that day, on that final day, because the Lord can see. In Romans chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 5. Romans chapter 2. In Romans chapter 2, we're reading from verse 5, telling us about the wrath of God that will come upon the rebellious and the disobedient and the unsaved and the ungodly, the unrighteous. In Romans chapter 2, verse 5, and after thy hardness and impenitent heart, Thou treasurest, uh, thou treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. What does that mean? What it means is this, after thy hardness and impenitent heart. Uh, there are times you come to the Bible study and at the Bible study, the Lord is telling you, you are the one the Holy Spirit is talking about. You are the one the Lord is knocking at the door of your heart. 
And the Lord is saying, make this thing right. Face the shame once and for all. And face the truth once and for all. And then after a day or two, after one year, everything is over. The Lord will forgive you. The people will forgive you. Even if you are deceived, it will be over. Face it. And whatever will come. After all, you've done evil. You've done that bad thing. You've covered that thing up. Expose it once and for all. Whatever will happen, that's better for you here on earth. And then you say, all right, I will. Because you want to silence the Holy Spirit. And then after you go from the Bible study, then you shrug your shoulder. And then you have a way you do it psychologically to silence your mind and to silence your heart. And then you have a bold face, an adamant mind. And then you have a stony face and say, you say, what's that? And then if your conscience says anything again, leave me alone. I'm all right. I'm a child of God. What have I done? Did I kill anybody? And then you screw your face and you harden your conscience. After thy hardness and impenitent heart, you treasure up unto yourself wrath against the day of wrath and the revelation of the righteous judgment of God in verse 6, who will render to every man according to his deeds. The judgment is coming and it will render to every man according to his deed. It tells us in verse, um, in verse 8, but unto them that are contentious. And do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness. There will be indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew force and also of the Gentile. But glory and honor and peace to every man that walketh good, to the Jew force and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. You understand that? There is no respect of persons with God. Uh, what it means is, you know, in our midst here, uh, when somebody does something, and then the leader will call that individual and say, is it you that did this? And then the fellow, instead of saying yes and repenting, instead of the fellow saying, yes, I'm the one, I, in fact, I've removed myself from the work of God. I don't want to pollute the work of God. You say, uh, yes, I am, my brother. Yes, I am. I know you love me. Okay, it's because it's you. Don't do that again. If it's another person, then we frown at them. And we say, how could you do that? You're disciplined. And then they are put in that discipline for years. But if it is this fellow, because of respect of persons, because of favoritism, because of not wanting to deal with everyone according to the standard of the word of God, okay, because it's you. Now, if we talk now, if we discipline you, if we correct you now, you know, what will your, you know, the people that love you and your well-wishers, wherever they are, what will they say? Don't let us do something that will scatter this church, because if we talk now, everything will scatter. Okay, go. Ah, you are the one that told them to go. God has not told them to go. It's in the book. It's recorded. And God is no respecter of persons. It will come out on that final day. Except you repent today. Except you call upon the name of the Lord and say, Lord, I am sorry. I want to make right my way. I pray that God himself will help us to do the right thing. And then we'll be able to escape the judgment of God. I come to, back, I come to point number three. We're coming back to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. We're looking at verse 14. Revelation chapter 20, verse 14 and verse 15. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is a second death. Whoso and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And this is talking about death dying. Death going out of existence. Death existing no more. You know that death has reigned from the time of Adam even until this time. And until the time of the end of the millennial reign, death will keep on reigning. And people will be dying. At least after the millennial reign, you have read about the battle of Armageddon. When many, many people are going to die because they are fighting against the almighty God. One to him that fighteth, striveth against his maker. But at this time now, at the time of the great white throne judgment, death will be put out of operation. So that everybody now will live forever. And the sinners will live forever in hell. 
and the believers will live forever in heaven. And it says, and whosoever was not found reaching in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The single condition that will save anybody from being cast into the lake of fire will be that you are found reaching in the book of life. All others, whoever they are, princes or kings, nobles or philosophers, statesmen or conquerors, warriors or whoever they are, rich men or poor men, young or aged, humble, so, so to say, or the proud, the sober and the vain, the religious and the irreligious, whosoever was not found, reaching in the book of life or be cast into the lake of fire. Uh, what a great day that will be when death will operate no more. And that thing that is called death will be cast into the lake of fire itself in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 26. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 26. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Yes, the people of God knew long ago that death was going to be destroyed. It will be put out of operation. It will exist no more and people will live forever. But the only thing is that those who are sinners, who have died as sinners, and who will be raised up as sinners, they will live forever apart from God, away from God, separated from God in eternal lake of fire. In Isaiah chapter 25, verse 8, Isaiah chapter 25, verse 8, it will swallow up death in victory. And the Lord God will wipe it with tears from all faces. That is from the faces of the people that have done right. The pe people that have been saved. And the people that have accepted the righteousness of God. Imparted, imputed, covering up their lives. And it says, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth. For the Lord has spoken it. The Lord has spoken it that death is going to be swallowed up. And at that time, death will not act anymore, will not exist anymore. It is the death of death. That's why it's called, it's called the second death. And then people are going to live forever in that final lake of fire. In Hosea chapter 13, verse 14. Hosea chapter 13, reading verse 14. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plague. So grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. That is, God says, I'm not going to change my mind. Yet death is going to go out of existence. Come back to Revelation chapter 20 and see that last verse again. In Revelation chapter 20, the last verse, verse 15. And so ever was not found reaching in the book of life, was cast into the lake of fire. Whosoever, whosoever was not found reaching in the book of life, was cast into the lake of fire. The question is, even before this time of the great white throne judgment, anybody in the lake of fire? Let's see. In Revelation chapter 14 verse 9, Revelation chapter 14 verse 9, it says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And it shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast or, and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. You know, there are the people that have received the mark of the Antichrist, the mark of the beast. And there was no way of repentance for them. Therefore, they will perish. They will be in that lake of fire. In Revelation chapter 19, verse 20. Revelation chapter 19, verse 20. And the beast was taken. And with him, the false prophet, that which that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that received the mark of the beast and them that worship his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. The false prophet had been there. And also the antichrist, the beast, had been there. Not only that, chapter 20, verse 10. In chapter 20, verse 10, here he tells us, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone 
where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. As you see that these ones get into the lake of fire, you're asking yourself, who are the other people that will get there again? Whosoever was not found rich in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. Then in Revelation chapter 21 verse 8, Revelation 21 verse 8, but the fearful, the unbelieving, and the abominable, and the murderers, and the mongers, and the sorcerers, and the idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burn with fire and brimstone, which is the second day. Do you see the category of people that will be there? The fearful. I would have repented, but I'm afraid of what my wife will say. My wife told me that if I go to that church and repent and live a clean life and I don't get the money from the uh, kickbacks and from the bribery and corruption again, that she, well, if you go to that place and you begin to practice righteousness, I will leave you. So I'm afraid if I repent, I don't know the consequence, the fearful. Those are the people. Or the people that you have been living in sin together, uh, here, even in the church, you are hearing about salvation, about sanctification, and about holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And you are in a secret deal, a secret agreement, a secret covenant with another person coming to church, but he is not going to heaven. He just wants to stay in church and go from the gate, from the door of the church to the gate of hell. And you have the deal together. And then you say, well, with what I'm hearing, I want to repent. But this fellow told me, if I repent and I leak out the secret that we have been in covenant together, you will, you will suffer. Go and ask the other people that tried to reveal a secret before he suffered. And he himself now is regretting that he came out of our gang. But we're in church. Eh, we're in church. What do you mean we're in church? We will, we will come up that thing. And then you want to repent and say, but I'm afraid that if I repent and give my life to the Lord, they will, they will pepper me. They, my faith, my eyes will see pepper. And the fearful. Those are the people that will get to help. And then the unbelieving, the people that say, they are just talking like that. God cannot do that. Look at all, all of us, as many as we are. How can God just see people like this and then throw us to hell? God cannot do like that. The unbelieving, you don't believe it. You don't believe the word of God. At the time of Noah, when God said the flood was coming and the judgment was coming upon the people of the world, do you know that when uh, Daddy Noah was saying, repent, repent, for 120 years was preaching the word of God unto them, they were saying there's nothing like that. Have you seen any flood like that taking anybody away? This mighty God, this great God that gave us life like this, how is that God going to open his eyes and then everybody will perish in the flood? The unbelieving, they didn't believe. Do you remember when Lot went out and he went to tell his relatives in Sodom and Gomorrah, oh, get you out of this place because God is going to destroy the place. And the people said, did you have a dream last night? What happened to you? What are you saying? But look at this Lord. Look at what he's saying. Look at this beautiful house and beautiful temple and all these beautiful shops and everywhere where everybody they enjoying themselves. How is God going to rain down fire and destroy everybody? And it seemed as if it was a jester. He was just joking. They weren't believing, but the fire came. And it's the same thing today. Judgment is coming. And the people that do not repent, the people that do not turn away from their sins and call upon the name of the Lord, judgment will come upon them. And if you remain unbelieving and you think that sin is a little sin, I don't think God will judge me for that. I don't think God will reject me because of that. You are the unbelieving. If you don't repent, terrible judgment will come. Then the abominable. How many abominable things are people doing today? Do you know there are fathers that are making their daughters pregnant? Abominable sin. And do you know there are children that are defiling even their mothers? Abominable sin. Do you know there are brothers and sisters of the same family, the same father, the same mother, and they are committing fornication together? Abomination in the sight of the Lord. Do you know there are people that are going to church and they are carrying Bible and they are using the Jewish sin at home and they will carry the name of Jesus in the church? 
Do you know there are people that are even preaching and they say we believe in God, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. And when they finish preaching that uh, what they call the gospel, then they go to a herbalist outside and then they are taking care of themselves through the traditional medicine and through idol worship. That's abomination in the sight of the Lord and the murderers. What are we going to say about the people that are committing abortion? What are we going to say about the people that are killing lives? About the people that are murdering others? What are we going to say about the people that are looking for promotion? And that fellow is on top there. If we don't get rid of him, then we're not ever going to climb up. And then they will plan and get rid of that fellow, kill him so that they can get position. That position, that money, that prosperity you get by killing the other fellow there, you're going to answer for it in the day of judgment. And I about the people that, is, that are committing abortion. I about the people that are robbing and destroying people's lives because they're looking for money. I about the all mongers. That's, those are the adulterers. And those are the fornicators. And the sorcerers. Those are the witches. And those are the wizards, and they are hiding under the church. Uh, in our church here, uh, they don't uh, suspect anybody. They have told us to love everybody, and you are sucking blood, and you are there. You say, I belong to deeper life. Which deeper life do you belong to? Are you not a witch? Are you not a wizard? Are you not using familiar spirit? And they, but have been baptized in water. Will water baptism take away your witchcraft? If you don't repent, and if you don't leave that sin, I about all the evil things you are doing, and the lives of people, and the families of people you are wrecking with that witchcraft. If you don't repent, it says, and the fearful, and the unbelieving, and the abominable, and the murderers, and the, and the allmongers, and the sorcerers, and the idolaters, and all liars, whatever kind of lie they are telling, shall have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. But there's a way of escape if you call upon the name of the Lord. How will you escape? Number one, be saved and be sure. Be sure you are saved. Be sure you come out of sin and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Be saved and be sure. Number two, be separated. Come out from among them. And be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you and I will be a father unto you and you shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord. Number three, be sanctified and submissive. That after you have been saved, you go back to the Lord and then you allow him to take the Adamic nature away because it says follow peace with all men and Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Number one, be saved and be sure. Number two, be separated from all sin. Number three, be sanctified and submissive to the will of God, to the word of God. When the word of God comes to you, there is but one thing to do. Obey, just obey. Number four, be sober and be spiritual. All this jesting. Jesting with the word of God, jesting with the doctrines of the Bible, jesting with the principles of scripture, jesting with the great thing that the Lord is teaching us, be sober and be spiritual. Number five, be selfless and sincere. Be sincere to yourself because the day of judgment is coming and be selfless. Don't defend self. And just know, I want to serve the Lord. I want to get to heaven. You came from your church and you came over here. You came from your religion. You came over here. You came from whatever you were doing before you came over here. Why did you come? There are other churches there. Why don't you go to those other churches? Why are you staying here? Is it not because we want to get to heaven? Is it not because we taught you about holiness without which no man shall see the Lord? Why don't you then become sincere and say, I don't want to be a foolish fellow just staying here, hearing all these things and not giving my life to the Lord. Be selfless and sincere. Number six, be strong and steadfast. Be strong in the grace of God and say, nothing will drag me back. I want to give myself, I want to give my heart, I want to give my will, I want to give my mind, everything to the Lord, and I want to serve the Lord. I want to live all this uh, carelessness and carefree life. I'm going to be strong in the grace of God, and I'm going to be steadfast before the Lord, that when that trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise, and then the saints of God who are alive, they'll be caught up together with them, I will be there. I said I will be there. 
I know I will be there. I've made up my mind I'm going to be there. I'm not going to allow anything to tamper with my salvation and to tamper with my spiritual life. If that's your mind, you rise up and tell the Lord, you still have a day today, an opportunity today that you can call upon the Lord and say, Lord, here am I. I will not perish. Here am I. I will not die in sin. Here am I. I will not go to hell. Here am I. I will not get to that lake of fire. Here am I. I will not be among the people that are not in the book of life. Here am I. Oh Lord, I come to you today. That great white throne judgment, I will not be there. I will be among the raptured saints. I will be among the holy righteous people of God. I'm going to stand true. I'm going to stand faithful. Make sure you are saved. Make sure you are separated from things of the world. Make sure you are sanctified. Any sin in your heart, which is not of God, dig it out. Dig it out. Dig it out and throw it away and be cleansed and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. In the blood of Jesus. Have a new life. Have a new heart. Have a changed life and a changed heart. Let your salvation be so real that even the devil will not be able to doubt your salvation. Let your salvation be so real that even the demons will not be able to doubt that salvation. Let your salvation be so real that your husband cannot doubt that salvation. Your wife cannot doubt that salvation. Your neighbors cannot doubt that salvation. And your, your own mind will not doubt that salvation. That you are saved. That you are saved. That you are cleansed. And that the blood of Jesus Christ has washed you whiter than snow. Call upon the name of the Lord. The Lord is saying today, you can call upon him. There is still the mercy of God today. There is still the love of God today. There is still the grace of God today. If you will call upon the name of the Lord. Seek the Lord while he may be found. And call you upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way. And the righteous man is taught. Let him return, return, return. Let him return unto the Lord. And the Lord will have mercy upon him. And the Lord will abundantly pardon. If my people who are called by my name. Will humble themselves. Don't stay in your ivory tower of pride. And don't say uh, it cannot happen. It will not happen. I know I'm a child of God. Don't stay on the ivory tower of pride. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and will seek my face and will turn from their wicked ways and will pray unto me, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. The mercy is still there today. The grace is still there today. The love of God is still there today. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, whosoever, whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Make sure you are saved today. Be saved and be very sure. Be saved and be very sure. Have you been falling down to temptation? Have you been yielding to temptation? Have you been yielding yourself, your mind, your body, your tongue, your life, your family to temptation? Why don't you just repent today and say, Lord, I'm not going to be there at that time of the great white throne judgment. I will not be among the people that their names will be missing from the book of life. Oh Lord, save me today. Oh Lord, forgive me today. Oh Lord, change my life today. Are you, are, are you, are, are you with the world? A company with the world? Fellowship? Keeping with the world, drinking with the world, smoking with the world, in the secret call with the world, come out from among them and be separate. Be ye separate. Come out from them and be ye separate, says the Lord. And then the Lord says, I will receive you. I will have mercy upon you. And then I will be your God and you will be my daughter. You will be my son. Come out. Don't you know that ye adulterers and adulteresses whosoever will be a friend of the world will be an enemy of God. If you're a friend of the world, if you're associated with the world, you'll be an enemy of God. Be separated from them. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Because the things that are in the world, the loss of the flesh and the loss of the eyes and the pride of life. They are not of the Father but of the world. Therefore the world is passing away. But only the people that do the will of God will abide forever. Be separate. Be separate. Be separate. And you keep yourself unspotted from the world. You are telling the Lord, wash me. You are telling the Lord, cleanse me. You are telling the Lord, purify me. I don't want any of the practices of the world anymore. Any of the sacrifices of the world anymore. Any of the dressing of the world anymore. Any of the appearances of the world anymore. I don't want any of the compromises of the world anymore. And if anybody is in the church and is still worldly, I'm not going to compromise with them. I will not be hiding them. I will not be partnering with them. I will not be uh, colluding together with them. I'm going to live a clean life. 
a holy life, a righteous life, a separated life. And then if I need to expose them, I'm going to expose them. I'm not going to be in a covenant with, in a covenant with evil doers, in a covenant with sinners, in a covenant with backsliders. Because on that day, if you say today that you didn't know about it, it's on record. It's on record. And God will say, didn't you know? Didn't you know that that fellow was a thief? Didn't you know that that fellow was an adulterer? Didn't you know that that fellow was a terrible sinner? You covered him up. Now here we are. Then the judgment of God will come. It will come upon the sinners. It will come upon the people that are hiding them. It will come upon the people that are tolerating and managing them. It will come upon the people that are compromising with them. It will come upon the people that are defending them. But today is the day to say I'm not part of them anymore. I come out. I come out. I'm not part of them anymore. I want to go to heaven. When I came into this church, I didn't know any of these people. I want to serve the Lord. I don't want anybody to take me to hell. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. Be saved and be sure about it. And be separated. Not only that, be sanctified and be submissive. Submissive to the word of God. Don't let uh, disobedience come into your life. Don't let arrogance come into your life. Don't let stubbornness come into your life. Don't let, you know, the attitude of all these other people who say nobody can cut me. Nobody can hold me. Nobody can direct me. And nobody can talk to me. Nobody can correct me. Don't let that come to you. If you're on your way to heaven, be sanctified and be submissive. When you hear the word of God, you tremble at the word of God. You tremble at the word of God. And say, yes, Lord, I have heard. I will not harden my conscience. I will not harden my heart. Be sanctified and be submissive. Be sober and be spiritual. Be sober and be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, is walking about and seeking whom he will devour. Are you going to allow him to devour you? Are you going to allow him to deceive you? Are you going to allow him to close your mind? Close your mind to the truth and close your mind to the doctrine and close your mind to the warning of the word of God that we're hearing today. Be sober, be spiritual, be selfless. Don't think about yourself. Don't think about yourself. If I repent, if I turn away from the sin, if I come out of the gang, if I come out of the group, if I come out of the people that are doing evil, what will they say? What will they do to me? I'm thinking about myself. Be selfless. I'm be sincere. Do you want to go to heaven? Be sincere. And do you want to really serve God? Be sincere. Are you here to serve the Lord or to please people? Be sincere with yourself. Be strong and be steadfast. Strong in the grace of God. Strong in the grace of God. The grace of God is available. The grace that will help you to overcome temptation. The grace that will help you to be an overcomer. The grace that will help you to stand firm on compromising in the watch of God. Be strong in the grace of God against temptation against trial and you are able to endure whatever you have to endure and stand true and stand faithful to the word of god and allow nothing nothing to drive you back or nothing to make you cringe or compromise or be fearful be strong strong in your mind strong in your heart strong in your decision and strong in the fact that you are going to heaven you're not going to allow a so-called friend to drag you to hell you are not going to allow a so-called neighbor to drag you to hell. You are not going to allow a so-called partner to drag you to hell. You want to be so strong in your decision. I've made up my mind I'm going to heaven. I've made up my mind I'm going to please the Lord. I've made up my mind I'm going to serve the Lord. I've made up my mind I'm going to be faithful and truthful to the word of God I'm learning. I've made up my mind I will exalt Christ, I will exalt Christ above man. Exalt Christ above a woman. Exalt Christ above a neighbor. Exalt Christ above anybody on earth. Be strong in your mind and be steadfast unmovable. Be steadfast and unmovable. And then you tell the people none of these things move me. Whatever the people say, whatever the people do, however the people gossip, however the people insult you, however the people abuse you, however the people try to discourage you, be steadfast. None of these things move me. I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to serve the Lord. I've made up my mind. I will serve the Lord. It's only those kinds of people that are going to make it on a final day when the judgment throne of God is set. And then the Lord brings everybody one by one before him. And then you have to answer for what you have done on earth. 
Would your record be clean? 